Excuse Bless me. You. I feel better, you guys. Bless you, my love. I feel better. I know. That's good. It's not, a cold. Not 100%, but... Not 100%, but, I mean, I was, like, in bed last... I, after I got done with you guys, I stayed in bed, and I never got out. It was movie night. I never have sat down and... I don't sit down and watch movies or watch shows unless it's in Beverly Hills, and that's in Miami. That's but, coming up. Uh, Kelly's Movie Reviews. A new segment here coming up I in watched a five movies... <laughs> This is your Daily Smash for Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. I'm Ray. I'm Kelly. The movie reviews. Also, uh, the results of our Daily Smash investigation into rounding up at the register. And also, the <coughs> alleged racist at Buckingham Palace has been revealed. Or should I say confirmed. What do you mean? Aren't they always racist? Yeah, everyone is, apparently. Everybody's More racist. We want to remind you guys, uh, we're doing a holiday special on our Smash and Rick and Kelly Show swag. These hats, uh, five bucks off, so they're down to twenty dollars for your hats, which are awesome trucker hats. And then the sweatshirts are now forty, and there's a bundle for fifty-five available for for you guys. So Smash or Rick and Kelly Show. We only have the Smash sweatshirts in medium, just FYI. So the Rick and Kelly shows are awesome. I really want to make my kind Super of hats strong. that I like. We're I know they're make... expensive, but the kinds that are that everybody will like to wear the kind that I the like fitted ones. the fitted ones yeah. gonna, I want I want to buy the like I love wearing those it does look great on you though I know but the ones that I want to make we're gonna make I'm gonna make those hats. oh and you want to put that little thing on the side you right I want to put it right on the side so more people will buy them also uh these books are selling like hotcakes now that I'm I'm autographing them and sending them out to people individually you can buy them on our rickkellyshow.com website, but if you want me to autograph it directly to you uh, and you have Z Venmo or Zelle, then just email me at rickkellybiz at gmail.com and... Jackie. You tell me who you want me to assign it to and where you want me to send it and Venmo or Zelle me and I'll send it right out to you for the low, low price of 30 bucks, including shipping. I'm very proud of this book. So, Jackie, our Patreon, she just sent me this text just now. I'm going to yeah. read it to you. Hi, Kelly. In order for me to get a deal at the hydration room IVs, I joined for $149 a month membership. My 310 cocktail costs $210. It's, it has a ton of stuff. Uh, I was sick every several, several months. Once has to stay joined for three months before you cancel. Once canceled, you Oops. still have IVs. Basically, their 210 IV cost you $149. But the best part is... No credit card. No asking if you'd like to effing tip a nurse. The membership is one free IV a month. They roll it over and are there for a month. I'm, I, I, I know, know Brett. I know Brett, the owner of the hydration yeah. room. Well, maybe reach out to him. Yeah. I, he used to give them to me for free when I used to post. Like, we used to barter. Well, that other place you talk, told me about, I went in there. Yeah, the hydration boost. Boost. It's, it's right next to CSC Bon. Yeah, that place uh, apparently does not do deals for influencers. No, so I'm not going to you. Sorry. But you know what? <laughs> that whatever that that t cocktail. I didn't do the IV because I cheapened out. And uh, well, you I, talked about that shot yesterday. Yeah, but oh, I wasn't paying all night last night. It still kind of hurts. Britt Fred. We had a couple uh, home remedies. Britt Fred said, sorry, I don't feel well. I have an old concoction that really kills any stuff in your body. Two gr crushed garlic cloves. I want to do that tonight. Sea salt, juice of half a lemon, and drizzle with extra virgin olive oil. Mix it up and eat it like it is or put it on a piece of toasted bagel. I want to do that tonight. I want to see if this works. She says, not only is it delicious, but it will cure and boost your immune system. <laughs> Uh, and then Yvonne Green has an old homeopathic. homeopathic book. For your cough fever, just feeling sick, get a few bunches of parsley. Separate the bunch to two bunches. Put your kettle on. Put one half bunch parsley in and boil for five minutes in the kettle. Use a tea screen to pour your parsley tea into your cup. Add lemon and honey. I swear by this. The parsley cleans your kidneys and liver and flushes out the toxins from being sick. Have you well, that's what that glutathione is. So that's why I take glutathione. Glutathione clears everything out of your liver. Huh. So when I get sick, when I get those IVs, I typically, they put glutathione on there. And that's essentially what it does, cleans your liver out. 
Good to know. Someone else wants you to post us to post your enchilada recipe. It's on my um, it's on my Patreon. It is it's, on Patreon. It's called Mexican. The Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon.com. You can get all of Kelly's recipes. We have 119. This week's 119 show. We have 118 shows with a whole bunch of cooking with Kelly's. We highly recommend you subscribe to the Rick and Kelly Show on Patreon. This it's only $5. Week, it's like a cup, a cup of coffee. Right. And you can have all this content. So like when we sat down and watched movies last night, you can watch the Rick and Kelly Show for the next four months. Exactly. <laughs> um, this user... HK3VF on and on. Kelly, don't buy a five or six hundred dollar bottle of champagne. Announce the price on the air, then complain about buying it. I didn't buy it, and if you listen to Monday's episode, I said it got it for my birthday. Yeah. I mean, it's so funny how people only want to listen to their noise and don't want to hear the reality of the facts. Wait, just go back because okay. this was so annoying and so ridiculous. I never said I bought six. I, I said do it like was. The- I said on Monday. Someone bought this for me for my birthday. Mm-hmm. It was five to six hundred dollars of Vuv. Yep. And I brought it to them, and I said it was. A, and then some. Wait, like wait, read it. Read, it. read what she wrote. I do like the quote that they get to, but uh, yeah, they, read they the said, quote. "Don't buy the bottle. Announce the price on there, and then complain about buying it." I didn't so buy it. Tacky. If you felt uncomfortable about spending that amount, buy a different version of of quote. Money talks, wealth whispers. Ooh, I bet you have more money than you. <laughs> Carrie and Todd were very generous to invite Gosh, you. Of course they like, were. We thanked them profusely, repeatedly. I mean, of course we did. I, I, that's so ridiculous. And they're friends. Like, we invite people to our house all the time. And we don't expect anything. But people bring stuff sometimes. I mean, it's like oh, money talks, wealth whispers. Yeah. I, I know how it works, okay, lady? <laughs> all right? I know how exactly how it works. So, as we mentioned... Uh, we Kelly was in bed. It's a shame. Well, no, it was a shame that no one drank. That was my point. Right. It, it there's so much in there. Like there's so many comments in there where people don't really listen to what I have to say. And I love how you guys, my smashers, go and they have to say she didn't say it like that. Somebody goes, oh, that's your ego talking. I'm like. No, that's not what she said. Right. Like, it's so... I love it when they do that. When everyone... When, they, when the army comes out. The army? Yeah. And they... they Defend they, you. They defend me. It's yeah. so awesome to see. <laughs> because it's like, how did you not hear that? Or how did you get that to be something that you're making up in your head? Right. Yeah. And listen, a lot of people are probably only half paying attention. Uh-huh. You know, because a lot of times we're distracted by stuff, so they might have missed it, and I get that. And I, I don't want to discourage anyone from writing in. We really appreciate your comments. And I got to tell you, at the first thing Kelly does when she wakes up in the morning, one of the first things she does is start reading your comments. She yeah. does. She's very good about that. And I read them too when we respond to them when we can. Um, so please keep supplying them. Kim Kim Devlin's just awesome. She's like <laughs> she's my she's one of my favorites. And she's one of our patrons, and she's on our Zoom call every weekend. VIP and party patrons. But she she's the one that like defends Zoom. me and goes, did you, "Did you not hear like what she was saying?" Like, yeah, that's really nice. So we did watch a bunch of movies. As soon as I finished editing the Smash, we got in bed, and Kelly actually rewound a movie she was an hour into because she wanted me to see it. Right. So we watched it together, and then we watched two more. And My the, cousin Tony brought me some um, soup. chicken soup from El Ranchito. It was so, so good. good. So good. So I have four movies that we're going to get Kelly's review on, and I'll weigh in when she's done. The first one is Worth, which meant a lot to me because I was, as you may know, uh, at Ground Zero on 9-11 before the towers fell. It's the first chapter in my book. Worth. How awesome is Michael Keaton? That guy's going to be I, the he, best actor Ever. He's definitely one of the best yeah. American iconic actors working today. I, mean, I would give him he, that. He's he is amazing. Terrific. So Michael Keaton plays lawyer Kenneth Feinberg, who was assigned to um, shepherd the 9 11 uh, payouts to the victims and victims' families. He was in charge of this very difficult job of figuring out how much each family should get from the government and then just getting all these families to sign on because they needed 85% of all the victims to sign on to make this work and and avoid lawsuits, which could have crippled the economy. So this movie was released September 3rd, 2021, 20 years after 9-11, starring Michael Keaton, Amy Ryan, Stanley Tucci, 
And it, your thoughts? I thought it was really, I thought it was, well, I, I didn't know, I know Rick has PTSD from it. I didn't know how you could sit through that whole thing and like not cry or like, like make it hit home for you. Cause it, it was sad. I, I appreciate it when you, t- when you said that to me, we were watching it. I, I'm okay with most 9-11 related stories and issues. It's only when I watch the video of the planes hitting the towers, watch video from that day. And then there was some of that uh, of people in the streets. That that gets me a little bit. I just, um, like, it's like a, you're like in a conundrum, right? Like, you have these people who all perished and fell and died. And then you have these families and you're trying to figure out how much you're worth. That's the, hence the name, worth. Mm-hmm. And... You see a CEO was making, you know, $700,000 a year mm-hmm. plus his bonuses and whatever. And then they do the payout, which is like $4.5 million. Then he has somebody who was a, uh, fire fi- a firefighter. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. A firefighter. And, uh, and you see them saving their lives, risking their lives, and they're only getting... Two hundred thousand dollars. But what I said to out. Kelly was, this is this is standard for for life insurance companies, insurance companies in general, lawsuits. There's an actuary table to to calculate the value of a lost life based on primarily future earnings. Right. So they have to take into account, and that's what he tried to explain to the victims' families who were, didn't want to hear that. They have to take into account how much you made, how much you were going to make in the years you potentially had left. And someone was complaining, well, we were the same, you know, they, they, their lives are the same. They were both there at the same time. They both died. What's the difference? And it goes, yeah, well, your mortgage is different. You know, this guy's got a $10 million house and you have a, you know, a $100,000 apartment. Your expenses are vastly different. Expectations of earnings, all that. Anyway, I thought it was very I well liked done. I like all the, the stories. So they had this one lady that was all about her husband and thought he was the knees bees and he ended up having another family she didn't even know like he had two other daughters and with a mistress with a mistress yeah and she thought that he was the best thing since you know milk toast and that was a great story yeah then they have these hispanics that were working in janitors and they were getting the lowest on the totem pole and the lady goes what do they say and she's like they were grateful yeah it's like all these little stories that were, it was a well done. Okay, so. I liked it. On a 10 point scale, 10 being the best, one being the worst. Well, I thought it was, it was a little hard to watch. Yeah. So I would say an eight, maybe 7.5. That's what I was going to say. I yeah. give it a seven five eight. The Killing of a Sacred Deer with Nicole Kidman, Colin Farrell, and Alicia Silverstone, plus some creepy kid. It was amazing. The story of a surgeon who takes a teenage boy under his wing after the boy's dad dies, but then things take a sinister turn. So I turned this on and it was so weird. And they kept playing like music like they did back in the Alfred Hitchcock days, like, like roo, roo, you know, like the like that dramatic music, like back in the Alfred Hitchcock. It, it's you know what like, else it reminded me of was Taxi Driver, that tone. Yeah. That, that, so the tone was like, they were talking like robots and you did it was like so a matter of fact and it was very strange it was oddly directed the 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 dialect the, the way they spoke to each other it was like it was like ai wasn't generated it didn't <laughs> yeah, it it just seemed that way it, it seemed like that and it was it was odd but also riveting i thought that little boy played Excellent. That kid was like, should have won an Academy Award. It took a while. Because you hated get... him so much. Yeah. Yeah. He was creepy. Yeah. And it took a while to get to the point, to get to where you realize where this thing was headed. But once it gets there, it's like ridiculous. I was on, I was on like this. Okay. On a 10 point scale, what would you give that film? An eight. That was pretty good. I might give it an eight five just because of the originality. Because it was so different. But... You might not like it. Like I don't. It's not for everyone. I don't think. Yeah. Okay. The next film is Locked In, a psychological thriller starring Famke Johnson. That girl she is was, so beautiful. She was in the X Men. What other movies she is in? I she's love that girl. A bunch of stuff. She's beautiful. 
So that movie I would describe as stylish and scary, but also maybe slow, a little slow. A little slow. I give that about a six. Oh. I thought it was good, though. I mean, I saw it twice. <laughs> That's the one she was watching when I came downstairs. Yeah. Would you recommend it? Yes, I, okay. I do. I, 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 I thought it was good. I'll give it a seven. And then the last one we watched, Late Night, which I fell asleep a couple times. I was drifting in and out because it was really late. Called Intrusion, starring Frida Pinto and Logan Marshall Green, about a couple that moves to a big new house in a small town, and they suffer a break-in and then a home invasion, and then it just starts getting really freaky. I thought it was so good. You did? Oh, I thought it was excellent. Okay. Yeah. I what? thought it was... It was gripping. I thought it was gripping. I, I fall asleep every time I lay in bed. It was shocking. <laughs> I was so sick and I could stay up to like 2 o'clock in the morning watching all these films. It was a psychological thriller. I loved it. Well, what do you give I say that? nine. Oh, really? I, I loved it. I thought it was good. I'm going to go lower on that one just because there were some scenes that just didn't make sense. Like they're going to throw a party. I, I don't want to give it away what happened in the house, but I, never, I don't think they ever would have had a party. But, and I want to know how that girl got water and how she went to the bathroom when she was oh, wearing diapers. Oh, yeah. I don't want to say. I'm going to give it a 7, 5, or an 8. But it's worth watching. We talked about AI yesterday. Kelly just mentioned it. And then you sent me this today. There was an article. I was you, reading it. I was, I was reading my articles. You, you get these Newsbreak. Is that the website, Newsbreak? Yeah, Newsbreak. I get Newsbreak. She gets these alerts. So it was an article from Newsbreak about Robert De Niro settling his $12 million lawsuit, or a lawsuit that was against him, by his former work wife. And What the, does a former work wife mean? Well, that's what I think she called herself. She was his assistant, but they, I think they joked that she was the work wife. Oh, okay. Like the wife at work. She handled all of his business. Right. So there's the byline of who wrote the article, and underneath it it says... This article was written with the help of AI software. And Rick goes, nobody can write anymore? How hard is it to write an article about the settlement in the Robert De Niro case? Like, you look at the facts and you write the article. Well, so somebody, and I sent it to you, um, one of our smashers sent this thing about, um, I sent it to you this morning. But go ahead, talk about it, because I'm going to read well, it. Well, I'm just, I, I'm, we talked about this yesterday, about how Sports Illustrated got caught printing a bunch of stuff that was all AI generated by fake authors who were whose pictures were created by AI. The whole thing is just really upsetting. Oh, here, this is one of our smashers. Heart of Texas. Oh yeah, I have this in here actually. Excellent points about the death of journalism. We've all, we're already headed in that direction. I remember, this is from Heart of Texas, thank you, three. I remember when news outlets prided themselves on using correct grammar, spelling, and punctuation. You can't skim a news website today without finding half sentences that don't make any sense. Is it because we're lowering our standards to pass English class or leaving it to the robots to write? Kelly needs some chicken soup. We have chicken soup. So, oh. wait, no. So, I know, I don't have, I, I forgot to pull that out. I have all this other well, stuff Well, hold here. on a second. So, Rick gets this thing from... Fox News. Yeah. And it said, and it had something about, what did it say? I'm, Breaking I'm, news? Yeah, but I forget what the word was, so I can't really tell the story very well because the, they, they mixed up two words and it was in their headline on their website. And I'm like, this is what happens when you hire kids. I don't know if AI would have misspelled or used the wrong word in a sentence. They might. It might. But... It's, it's sort of a two-fold thing. You're hiring young, inexperienced people to be journalists. Uh -huh. And you're using AI to create content. So it's a, it's, it's a far cry from the kind of work that we all took pride in back in the day. Well, and you're a wordsmith. And Thank you. And you know how to write, obviously. He's a writer. Uh, but... Does it make you mad to see this? It does. It makes me mad. It's upsetting. It's disgusting. And I think, you know, if people don't like it and they and they talk about it and maybe they don't frequent the outlets that are using AI, then maybe that puts some pressure on them to... Step, step it up? Yeah. Learn how to write? Exactly have some grammar? Have some up. punctuations? We had a comment about tipping because you were we were talking about how you the nurse wanted a tip for giving you an injection. Yeah. 
So someone wrote, tipping in the UK is 100% choice. In Spain, lived there 20 years, they can get offended by tipping. To Europeans, tipping in the US is crazy. I, I, I agree. I love our Europeans when they sway in. Yeah. And they have <laughs> one said, how can somebody complain about uh, the dinner that, that Carrie and whatever, somebody said that about oh. my enchiladas or something. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what she said. She goes, Americans are just so, um, I don't know, tacky is a word. I don't, I don't remember, but it was, it was, I just love it when you guys write in. Sydney Bond said, tip a nurse? No. Oh, here's another one from Spain from Alice MC. Love you guys. I wake up every morning here in Spain and watch your videos and like while having my coffee. Kelly, you should be back on RHOC. Thanks for the great content. I don't want to be on RHOC. I want to be on one of those girls trips. Give her a girls trip. I just want a girls trip. Jake E, feel better, Kelly. Your home is looking gorge. Hoping to see a tour when you guys are finished decorating. Inspire me to get my home started. We're doing that this week on Patreon. Yeah. We're gonna show. We're gonna redo this tree behind us, from from the top down, and show you the rest of the the garland and the stuff that that Kelly and I did. Mostly Kelly, like I'm Kelly I'm missing a lot of stuff. I think I left it in Elizabeth Vargas's uh, storage storage, and I'm not gonna ever get that back. I mean, that girl <laughs> is Looney Tunes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if we left stuff there. It's certainly possible. We had a lot. I'm of not stuff. getting it back. That lady is evil. Marcy Mack. Wait, what? Jolie drove the truck. We have the same Ram Laramie, and I'm terrified to drive it. Only my husband does. It's so big. It is. It's huge. Rick almost crashed it at the Chateau Marmont. I mean, it was well, it's huge. It's like a semi. That not thing. crashed it. I was I was trying to maneuver a corner, and it's really hard because it's so long, and the turning radius is is not great. I, she doesn't scare me anymore now driving. Oh, I'm so I was like this. I was on edge. I couldn't drive with her. I'm, oh, Jolita. Yeah, oh, she's I thought you were great. About me. Well, no, you you're getting better too. Thank you. Welcome. This uh, Kathy Longo said, "Me and my husband Stephen are excited. Our wine is on the way. Four bottles. Yay!" So on that note, Ilya Wine sponsors the Daily Smash, and it is a fantastic Spanish wine, designed in New York, made in Spain. You can get yours at twenty percent off on the two bottles at Ilya.com using the discount code Rick and Kelly twenty, or you can get three or more bottles with free shipping anywhere they ship. Guys, this is so great, especially for a holiday gift. Please support a small business. She's Honestly, fantastic. It, it and it's a, gotten points, 95 points. It's it's an amazing product. It's terrific, and we highly recommend it. And we hope you'll you'll get some for the holidays. And everyone enjoys it. Uh, every One of my, all my you smashers that come in, not one negative Yeah, comment. we have not had one, a single bad review. No. Am I blue mean? Rangemaster918 said, never round up for charity. Want to know why? The store gets the write-off. That is correct, Rangemaster. Good job, Range Master. We oh, love you. One more thing about Ilya. Sharon Walker having to reorder more Ilya red wine. It was a hit for Thanksgiving dinner, and I need to reorder for Christmas. Great wine. I love the red. This time I can order with free shipping. That's a huge deal. I See? agree. Is yeah. This the, yeah, this is the Robe is Red good. right here. Who's it that is, from? Sharon Walker? Sharon Walker. Love you too, Sharon Walker. Stuff You're my is homie. amazing. And, okay, so rounding up. We learned a lot about rounding up today because the internet is a wonderful thing. <laughs> Rick, Rick, so Rick was, in this morning when we were reading all this stuff, Rick, you just did, you delved into your research. I did, I dived in. He dived in after the rounding. Dive. Yeah, so read, read to us. This is exciting. Cecile Harrell said, no roundup for me. I have my own charities. And, and that's kind of the point. This is from Lifehacker, this article. And we're talking about when you go to the register in a grocery store or wherever, and you have the option of rounding up or adding $1, $2, $5, $10, $10 to a charity. Wait, somebody, one of our smashers goes, they go, would you like to round up? When she's like, no, but can I round down? <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. You check, made me laugh. Check out donations typically benefit a charity that the retailer selected, obviously. Not that there's anything wrong with their choice, but you might want to give your money to a local charity instead or one that benefits a specific medical condition that has affected you or your family. Now, if you itemize your tax deductions, when you round up, it's a lot more difficult to do that. You can still report those charitable donations, believe it or not, even if it's 29 cents or whatever it is, but you have to save the receipt. 
And if you're doing that all the time, think about the stack of receipts that you would have to include in your when you're filling out your taxes. Well, you can just go to the Salvation Army and you can go, they give you like a blank thing and you can put $10,000. <laughs> Not that we're endorsing cheating <laughs> on your taxes. No, no, no. But the point is, if you want to give, let's say you give $1,000 a year to charity, it's a lot easier to write a check to the charity of your choice, which, by the way, you can then vet. You'll know if it's a highly rated charity or not. You can go into that the, the, the charity uh, rating services and find out how much of their how much of the don donations go to the actual people who need it. But if you're giving it to a grocery store or anyone else, you're kind of at their mercy as to uh, as to how how good that charity is. Now, but here's another thing, and this is more important to me. CVS is an example where they ask for customer donations to fund a corporate philanthropy pledge. They pledge CVS, the drugstore. They pledge to donate $10 million to the American Diabetes Association. And they use checkout donations for it. They encourage people like for a month, like, hey, chip in or, or come uh, support our cause, this American diabetes. But what people didn't know was the money they gave wasn't being added to the $10 million. It was, it was part of the $10 million. So the more people gave at the register, the less CVS had to give. So in effect... Every time you donated at the register, that charity was getting less. If you had written that check yourself to the American Diabetes Association and let CVS give the $10 million, they would have gotten more than $10 million. Mm -hmm. But because all these people were donating, CVS just was like, okay, thanks, thanks. They collect all the money and then they give it out. And the other So thing, it was like one of those things where you're trying to raise money and they have like it's a thermometer yeah. and they have the little lines in <laughs> yes. there. It's like that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. um, the, the, Why didn't they just present it like that? <coughs> because it was in their interest to not tell everyone the full story so that they would eventually give less. And the other thing that the other part of that is you have to wait for them to donate the money as opposed to you could write the check tomorrow and the and American Diabetes Association would have the check in two or three days and they can start spending that money. If you give the money to CVS, you have to wait for CVS to then give the money to them. And that might be a year from now. Right. We don't know. So there are a lot of wrinkles here. I don't, one thing I was looking for that I didn't find was percentages that were being skimmed off the top. I don't know about that. Well, let's find out. Part two of our investigation. Because I teased it, I'm going to do this in the news now. In the news. The identity of the racist royal accidentally revealed in the Dutch edition of bombshell book you guys probably remember the uh bombshell biography endgame inside the royal family and the monarchy's fight for survival that book the original draft included the name of a royal who allegedly reacted negatively to Meghan markle's baby with uh, it's, it's it's the dad Prince harry it's the dad right it's the now king of england is the dad yeah charles the name was redacted from the book that everyone in America got and everyone in Great Britain got because of libel laws and I guess because they didn't want to... But they, someone made a mistake and they published an earlier version of the book in, in Dutch that included the name of the person who allegedly said, well, uh, <laughs> hold on, I'm looking for the quote. Wait, so, wait, I'm confused really quick. Yeah. So there was a book that was... You, they have a lot of control. They work together, the press and, and the royal family. Who wrote the book? Uh, this person, um, Omid Scobie. So, I'm not sure who Omid Scobie was. I apologize. I think it was someone who worked in the in the palace. They wrote a book and they claimed that one of the royals had concerns about the skin color of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's son. Oh, really? And that ginger looks hot? <laughs> Saying. So <laughs> that baby's white as can be. When they realized that it it is. Uh -huh. He is. When they realized that the book contained this name, they immediately pulled it from the shelves. They suspended publication of the book in this this version of the book, the in Dutch, the Dutch version of the book. And the Dutch journalists who found out about it redacted the name. They wouldn't say it. 
in their reports. And either did the Daily Mail that broke the story. Still won't say the name, but the New York Post doesn't care. And the New York Post uh, couldn't confirm the name that was we accidentally revealed. We already knew. Revealed. I didn't even read the book. We all, we all knew it was King Charles. Dutch media members who saw the errant book say it matches the claims of previously released royal biographies, which we featured, the page six feature last year. And you are correct. According to the New York Post, oh. King Charles had concerns about the skin color of the baby that Harry and Meghan had. Wow. Do you receive that? Uh, was it, was it um, Chris Rock? Chris Rock, if you guys haven't seen that, that, uh, his special, his special, it is hilarious. He goes, everybody's worried about the skin color when the baby comes out. He goes, even the blackest of the blacks, he's like, come out there and they want to see if the baby's uh, a little bit white. Oh, that's a really <laughs> light baby. Was that hilarious? He's allowed to joke about that. Yeah. He's not racist. Um, on that note. We really appreciate your support, it was and funny. we hope to see you back here again tomorrow. We hope you have a smash-tastic day, Kelly. We hope you feel better. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm on my way to greatness. <laughs> I'm gonna go work out tomorrow. Me too. I'm gonna talk about. My oh, we shoes. didn't talk about your shoes. You want to do that tomorrow? Yeah, let's talk about that okay. tomorrow. All right. All have right. a great day, everybody. Thank you.